In this video we're going to explore how to create the pen slider block in Fusion 360 from the drawing that is provided in the assignment. So this is in the, you'll probably have a printout of this, but it is also in the resources tab. So here you'll have the pen slider drawing and we're going to create ours. I'm going to show you the process in which I'm going to use to kind of create it. And as we do that, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Go into Fusion. So if you have another part here, I'm going to go ahead and start off with an untitled design file. Might want to save this as the pen, pen slider block. Go ahead and hit save. I'm going to do new component. Under the component name, I'll call this pen slider and say OK. And I'm going to create a new sketch on this right work plane. And I'm going to draw a sketch. I'm going to use the line tool and I'm going to start over here on the left side of the origin, draw a line across, click, and I'm going to draw this little shape right here. Again, I'm not really worried about the sizing. I'm just worried about getting the overall kind of shape. Okay, so here's what it looks like. We're going to use some of our geometric constraints to help us control the geometry. So those are up here with constraints and I'm going to see midpoint. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to select this line on the bottom and I'm going to select the origin and what that's going to do is that's going to align the midpoint of that line and constrain it right to the origin point. Okay, I'm going to right click and say OK to get off of that constraint. The next one I'm going to have is if I click this line, this line right here can go up and down but I want this one to be to go up at the same time. So I'm going to choose from this one collinear and I'm going to choose this line and I'm going to choose this one. And now you're going to see that when I do that, these two lines should move together, and that makes them forced to be able to do that. The next one I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in the horizontal vertical. Click. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold the shift key on the keyboard, trace over my line, and when I see that X with the little with the triangle, which is representing the midpoint, I'm going to click it, and then I'm going to choose the origin. And that's going to shift, there's the midpoint, and now that's going to vertically align those two points together so then that way that they can't go through and move from each other. So now if I click and drag this, both of these lines, the edges of the lines are going to move rather than this be off center. From here I'm going to go ahead and put in some dimensions. So from our drawing, the height of this is 0.375. And it may, may uh, size up your sketch a little bit. From the overall height, it's going to be 0.813, and I'm just going to go through and just double check, 0.813 on the height, 0.375. The overall depth is going to be 0.734 with, on the edges, 0.141. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this one for first for your overall, so I'm going to click from this line to this one, 0.141. And then the overall, click on this side and go to here, 0.734. And that will go through and give us a fully constrained sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and say finish sketch. I'm going to go ahead and hit extrude. This time over here in my menu, instead of one side, I'm going to do a symmetric extrusion. And when I go through and click and grab, if I click and grab this arrow, it's going to build one out all the way around. So this one's going to be 1.75. Now, on the measurement, this option here says half length. I want the whole length, which is the second option, 1.75, and I can say OK. And that will give me the starting of my slider block. So in order to continue to add some of these components, so there is the 1.75 width. I need to add in a hole, and I need to add in some of the chamfers, and as well as the little rounded edge. So to give this the appearance, let's do the chamfers, 0.125. So here's my chamfer tool. I'm going to do equal distance. I'm going to choose this edge and this one. Should pick the same two on the same side. And I'm going to do the same ones over here on the end. And without having to turn in this, I should see this one highlighted in black. And I should see this one highlighted as well. But here, 0.125. And that's going to go through and chamfer those at an equal distance and give it more, makes it look a little bit more like our slider blocks. So I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go ahead and choose fill it next. Choose this line, spin around, choose this line, 0.25, and 
and now you're going to see there's those rounded edges as they're being shown. And I'm going to go ahead and say OK. OK, the last part is going to be going through and looking at our hole. So we have a hole note down here on the bottom. It is a 0.165 through hole with a counterbore diameter of 1.177, drilled down 0.633. So I'm going to go ahead and go to this model here. I'm going to go ahead and spin this around to the bottom. And I'm going to create a new sketch down here on the bottom. Now the easy thing is, since that's going to be directly in the middle, I'm just going to go ahead and say create point, And I'm going to click right here on the origin to set the point. And that's going to automatically constrain it. And I don't need to worry about dimensioning it because if I do, I can see that this is going to match our drawing. 0.875, it's already going to do that. I'm going to hit cancel. I don't want to do a driven dimension. And from this edge, this is 0.367. And that matches our dimension as well. That's why I did that symmetric extrusion. So I'm going to say finish sketch, use my hole command, choose my hole there. And I'm going to go ahead and set up for my counterbore. So this is going to be a through all hole. The hole type here is simple. This right here is the counterbore. So the hole type second one ends counterbore. There's no tap type, so we're going to leave that in the first option. If you want to make sure that it is flat, there's where you can set up either drill point or you can make it flat. So I'm going to change it to flat just that way it takes one less little menu there. And my counterbore diameter is the top one. 0.177. It is drilled down a depth of 0.633 and this diameter hole is 0.165. And this is where you're going to see a preview of that hole go all the way through your slider block and I'm going to say OK. And that right there will go through and give you the slider block that you need. You can always right click on the, the option to go to find the properties. Again, you may need to change the properties. What we're going to do here under physical material, I'm actually going to have you change it. It automatically defaults to steel, but we're going to find plastic and we're going to use ABS plastic and just drag and drop onto our part. It's going to kind of turn it like a white. If you want to change it to a different color, here's your appearance. And then here we could always go through and show uh, under paint. And if we want to change that to blue, we could always drag that on there. All right, so and you guys can go through and set up and find what properties you have and report that in the activity document. So there we go with our properties that we need. Okay. This will be one of the steps. This is the pin slider, so you put that information here. And in the next video, we'll move on to the screw slider drawing.